Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Ryan Scott Graham, also known as Speak Love, You Speak Love. Hey, hello. Thanks that was a me. mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> it's a very long, annoying name. So. No, it's great though. Thanks. It's memorable, that's for sure. It's, it's something. It's something. Definitely something is what it is. <laughs> so how are you doing? How's it I'm going? I'm good. I'm happy to be here in Florida. It's warm. Yeah. I'm sweating for the first time on this tour, so I'm not stoked about that. First time and probably the last time though, because it is winter. We so. are going north after this, so it's going to be pretty rough, but yeah. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> good, good. And you're out with Neck Deep. I feel yep. like those are old friends of yours by yeah, now, right? I, so it's been good vibes? I know those guys inside and out, so uh, yeah. it's been a good time. Inside and out? Well, That's that's a lot. It's a little bit. That was a bit deep. Um, we've been <laughs> Almost hanging neck deep. I'm All so right, sorry. I'll... Interview's over. <laughs> no, we've been hanging with uh, Seaway and Creeper a lot too and uh, becoming yeah. like really, really good friends with them. So it's been a very, very fun tour. Oh, that's what I love to hear. Yeah. And um, let's talk about your music. Let's just get into let's it, do shall it. we? Let's do um, it. So Nearsighted is the album that just came out mm -hmm. not too long ago. This last Friday. Was last Friday. I was yeah. like, it was very recently. Um, so tell me a little bit the, about the album title and how does that kind of tie into the album artwork, which I thought was very interesting, by the way. Thanks. Uh, Nearsighted was actually, originally it was a song that was supposed to go on the record and it, okay. it was kind of the concept behind what I thought touched on a lot of the different songs that were on the record. And so it's basically just touching on um, just only being focused on what's in front of you, not being able to see that there is a bigger picture out there. and. Because there is, and I think a lot of a lot of times when people think about relationships, when they think about their life, they're just like so stressed about or worried about like what's happening right then and there, right in front of them, yeah. and uh, not being able to see that there is a future or there is something else out there, maybe something better than what they're going through right now. So that was kind of my inspiration for the song, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, I think every song at least kind of touches on that in, in a yeah. way. As far as the album artwork, I wanted something like very ominous, yeah. and uh, you know, the blurry faces and the, and the like the the black cloaked figure, um, just kind of I thought tied in really nicely with the nearsighted theme. Yeah, um, definitely gets the point across. Making it vague enough for people to be like, "What's going on here?" But uh, kind of like, I wanted people to like dive in and see, like, make their own kind of uh, judgment, so yeah. I think I did a decent job at that. I, I concur, yeah. you did, yeah, that's awesome. And I gotta give a shout out to Trey, thank you for doing the artwork, Trey Hals. Uh, Hi Trey. He, you know Trey. <laughs> no, I don't. You don't know Trey. <laughs> I do right. now. Well, you know him now. Yeah, he's, he's amazing, so he, he did a beautiful job on the artwork, so. Yeah, and um, as I was reading a little more about the album, I was kind of geeking out, realizing that you worked with Aaron Marsh from Copeland. Yeah. Absolutely love that band. 40 minutes from here. Yeah, in Lakeland, yep. right? Yeah, um, And it's definitely obvious, his influence on mm -hmm. this album. It does remind me of Ixora and some other cool. Copeland albums. Um, but what sort of did he bring to the table creatively, and what did he bring to the process? Aaron, Aaron is just like, I, I've been a huge fan of Copeland since, I mean, high school and so working with him was was obviously a dream it was like very <laughs> surreal uh, the drummer my drummer drew who played on the record is we actually met at a Copeland show Wow! Uh, so it was a very very huge like full circle moment um, but yeah his, his fingerprints are definitely all over the record uh, you know he he sprinkled in some horns and some keys and mm -hmm. really challenged me to kind of like step outside the the acoustic guitar uh, you know electric guitar kind of box and was like what do you think about trying you know I like this this arrangement or whatever but let's try it on a different instrument and let's do something else here and uh, re really just like kind of pushed me to um, experiment I mean I wanted to experiment on this record but I wasn't sure exactly how to do it and uh, I think he like pulled a lot of things out of me that I didn't know were there yeah. maybe yes and so there was also a bit of a three-year gap there mm -hmm. between two albums um, so how was your mindset different going into this process versus when you did the last one? Because three years is a long time. Three years is sure a long a time. a lot has happened. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of just about growing up. Like, it was really about being deliberate in, like, my decision making. I just mm -hmm. wanted everything to make sense rather than put it out there and be like, okay, that's good enough. Like, that, you know, I really wanted it to be like this note here, this instrument here, this lyric here. I wanted everything to make sense and be cohesive. And I wanted it to be a journey, like from the beginning to the end of the record. And, you know, I, I'm proud of my first record, but it was more of just like, a, this is all I've got. Let me put it out there, see if anybody cares about it. Right. With this one, it was like, okay, there's some anticipation. 
Um, you know, I really want to shine. I really want to like show people what I'm capable of doing. Yeah. And that was kind of what I was shooting for. Yeah, and what kind of grabbed my attention is that you say you wanted the album to be a journey. So was the track list very deliberate? Because I know a lot of people try to like shuffle an album, which yeah. I feel like in some ways can ruin the whole thought process. I completely agree. I mean, I think the way people listen to music now is like very single based. You know, like, yeah. people are streaming on Spotify and you know, like, okay, the top five songs, let's listen to them. These are obviously their best songs or whatever. But I really wanted it to be a record that was like, sit down with this record, put on some headphones, yeah. listen to it from front to back because it flows. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a journey and, and uh, my favorite records are the ones that feel like that. Yes. And so that's what I kind of try to capture. I'm not sure that it's really like the vibe for 2018, but it was more for me, so. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome though, that you really thought about that and thought that through. Absolutely. Um, and so what song do you think that new listeners should check out as the first impression? Would you say track number one or? No, or no? track number one. So <laughs> I tend to do like a kind of like an intro track on my record. So okay. like the first track on the first record is like a two minute long kind of intro. Same thing here. My favorite song to listen to and to play recently from the record is Cannot Have It All, mm -hmm. um, which I believe is track nine. And I don't know, I think it's a it's a decent segue between the last record and this record. And uh, so if you're coming from the first record and you wanna you wanna see what this new one's about, I think that's probably a good track to listen to. All right. Good yeah. plan. Yeah. Um, and so this is basically like your side project when you're not doing state champs, which mm -hmm. is more of the full time gig. Um, and I imagine it is very different being on your own and not having the rest of the guys, you know, hyping you up and being right. goofy. Um, so how are the vibes different when you are on the road and getting ready to go on stage and all that kind of stuff on your own versus with them? And which do you prefer? <laughs> uh, it's definitely different. I mean, like, I think. You know, state champs, obviously, high energy. We want everybody jumping around. We want people crowd surfing, going crazy. Speak Low is very mellow. You know, yeah. it's more of like a close your eyes and kind of experience. You Feel know, some what's... feelings. Absolutely. Like, everybody's got them. You, like, don't pretend like you don't have them. You know, it's okay to be emo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get lost in your feelings, y'all. Absolutely. So it's more of just like an extension of me, I guess. Like, I love, ju you know, jumping around and being the goofy guy that's state champs. But at the same yeah. time, like... I love other, like, I love Death Cat for Cutie, and I love, like, you know, I love the indie rock scene, and, like, I want to be a part of that as well. Like, I just want to make music because I love music, and I, you know, this is kind of what comes out naturally, I think, to me. And so, I think that's probably the main difference is that this is what's maybe more natural to me. State Champs, I kind of, like, had to find myself in that world a little bit. So, I can't really say that I prefer either of them, just because they they feel totally different. So politically correct. But I love <laughs> I, I love both of the bands. I love I love doing both. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. People coming up to me on this tour and they're like, "Are you still in State Champs?" And I'm like, "Yes." Like, <laughs> just because I play music in another band doesn't mean you know. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah. Of course. See, I was hoping like you would say, "Oh, I prefer Speak Low like so much more," and then I could send it to the rest of the guys and just have them drag yeah, you. Yeah, that but, would be great. Uh, that's not that's not what I got out of this today. You're not getting that nope. out of me. No, no drama. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Um, but you are on this tour of Neck Deep. What else is coming up for you, just in both worlds in general, that fans can look forward to? Uh, so yeah, we dropped the record on Friday. Nearsighted is yes. out now. Um, Which make sure you listen to it, please. Yes, please, and listen <laughs> to it in order. Yes. Um, and then uh, coming up after that, potentially some more Speak Low shows before we jump into Slam Dunk with State Ooh, Champs. Very exciting. Uh, we got some stuff coming up in the summer, and then uh, we got a Fall Out Boy tour in the nice. fall, which I'm very, very excited yeah, about. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to do as much as I can with both bands uh, when I have time. Yeah, so, keeping busy. Yeah. That is the one thing I know for staying, sure. Staying, staying very, very busy. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. Always a great talking to you. Everybody watching, make sure you check out the album if you haven't already, and subscribe for more interviews. We'll catch you later. Bye. See ya.